I sometimes think we're still getting to know one another, and uh, that's a good thing. All of us get to know each other better. Um, one thing for you to know about me is that that song's on my list of what I want at my funeral. Um, you know, there have been a lot of things I've wanted to know in my life. One of them I needed to know, I needed to know Hebrew back in the day to get into the seminary. And I can say the great Shema, Shema Israel, Adonai Achenu, Adonai Ached, that's one. About the only other word of Hebrew I still know is Yachav. As in, uh, it's the word for love. I have a wife that I love. That's the only way I remember it. Um, I've forgotten more than I know. I, I, as great a pastor as I think many of you know Pastor Black is, he has probably forgotten more things about theology than I will ever know. But I want to talk to you about knowing today. Knowing is something God says is so important 1,400 times the word no is used in some form in the Bible. It's more than love. It's more than obey. It's more than remember. The only word used more like the ver than the verb is, we can leave that out. The only true other word is the word God. So if you want to take the two most important words in the Bible, it's God and no, or no God. Or what is it God wants you to know? And that's what we're going to talk about today. And as that song, I think, hints at us, there's so much he wants us to know. And this is a, a world we live in with, a, they call it what, information overload. There's so many things you and I can know. And nowadays, I don't know about you, maybe I'm right on the cusp of where this is. But the younger generation seems to do it a lot more than me. I don't even bother knowing certain things anymore. Like I know my childhood telephone number, but I don't know all the numbers of my children's phones. Why? Because it's memorized for me in my phone, right? If you have one of those, those smartphones. I don't necessarily need to know how to do certain tasks anymore because I can just quickly look up on an internet search and find how to do it. I don't even necessarily need to know how many chapters there are in the Bible because I can just Google it. And if you saw that in the bulletin here, I've already forgotten the answer. I have to look it up myself. My gosh. See, I told you I've forgotten a lot, Pastor. Pastor Black just has me absolutely beat. 1,189. I did look it up on Google earlier, and then I lost track. So, things God wants us to know. He wants things he wants us to do. Did you hear it in the, the psalm that, that when he was talking about, You, O Lord, apart from you, O Lord, I have no good thing. So I want to ask you that question of, you know, do you know what you need? I mean, really, do you know, know what you need? In the 1990s, the average grocery store had 7,000 items up and down all the aisles. Do you know today it's closer to 50,000? A super center Walmart, about 140,000 different items for sale. Not to mention if you went online to any one of those online shopping sites to buy this, that, or so. Or an Ikea, for heaven's sakes. My, my, my. There's so many things we can have. There are so many things we can want. But do you know what you need? Things go faster for me in the grocery store if I have a list, so I only get what I need. You can probably relate to that. And I wonder if we took that approach to every day, if we took that approach to everyday life, if we'd make a list and realize that at the top of that list, the thing I need most is reconnecting with God. It's not the stuff in the supermarket. It's not the things I can search out on the internet. It is not the news I can turn to, listen to. It is not what the neighbor says about so-and-so. I need him. You and I need him. And the psalmist reminds us, well, you can find a lot of things in this world. The song we sang says that there's all this treasure, there's all these things available. But there's just one thing we need. We really need him. We need him as our guide. We need him as our, our voice of reason. We need him as the one that centers us 
and soothes us when we're hurting and afraid, strengthens us when we're weak or troubled. Do you know what you need? Apart from you, Lord, I have no good thing. Another one I want to ask you, do you know where you should go? We have all kinds of decisions to make. Now, you know I live on another part of town. Maybe you know or don't know that the exit to 610 and 59 is closed, and it will be for about, I don't know, maybe Jesus will come back before they open it. I'm not really sure. But I find that they're, all the construction they're doing, they change the route on me constantly. Every day when I get ready to come here, I fire up a, a map program and ask, okay, what's closed? What's my best way to get here? And I let it guide me on how to do that and hopefully save a few minutes. One of the routes I, I took, I didn't pay attention that day, and I found out I spent an extra 30 minutes on the road I didn't need to spend. It can be a little bit challenging to know where it is that we want to go. Again, if we made a list, oh, I need to go to the grocery store, I need to go to the hardware store, I need to stop here, I need to do this, it gets easier. And I wonder if we could put it at the top of our list that where we want to go is the way Jesus shows us. And there are a lot of ways you can go. Adam and Eve decided, I don't want to go God's way, I want to go my way. I want to figure it out for myself. I don't want to be told what to do. I want to be independent. I want to be free. You hear that spirit a lot in our country right now. And I know we're the land of the free and the home of the brave. But we, as Christian brothers and sisters, have an even higher allegiance, don't we? to the Savior who loves us, to the Savior who died for us, to the Jesus who said, I am the way. I am the truth that you need. I offer the life, I and only life, have the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and holiness that you really need. So we want to go his way. Before we decide, I'm going to go talk to so-and-so, I'm going to go do such and such, I'm going to buy this and so, can we make Jesus be our way? Is it Jesus? What's the way you want me to go? Who is it you want me to talk to? What is it you want me to say? What is the way I am to live in this chaotic, crazy, upside down world that seems so far from you? Jesus, I don't want to be far from you. So I want to know which way you want me to go. I want to know you are the way. The writer that many of us, I think, enjoy the most, the Christian writer, perhaps most famous in our country, is Max Licato. And he tells a wonderful story of climbing up Mount Kilimanjaro, the, the tallest mountain in all of Africa. And he was nervous whether he'd be able to make it or not. He'd never climbed a mountain before. And his guide turned around him and, and said, Mr. Max, just keep your eyes on my feet. Step where I step. Turn where I turn and I will get you to the top. Jesus is the way in the same way. Keep your eyes on his feet that took the nails for us. Keep your eyes on Jesus who suffered and died for us and showed, I know the way out of death, past death. I know the way and make the way to eternal life. Keep your eyes on me. I will get you to eternal life. Where do we want to go? And then another question I think that's really important is, what do, I, what do I know I should do? What should I be doing? I'll cover more of these scriptures in the Bible class, uh, more of the knowings and, and things, but there's a story that's kind of famous. Maybe you've run across it. A time when there were some folks who were nervous and worried about things. Two sisters, in fact, who were having Jesus to their house, I don't know, if I put myself in their sandals, I'd be probably nervous if Jesus was showing up at my house. Wow, I got to clean, I got to cook, I got to make it special. But can you kind of see that mindset of where, where they were? But one of them realized, having Jesus in my house is about the most precious thing that could happen. I don't know if it'll ever happen again. 
I don't know when else I will have a time to just sit with Jesus and soak up everything he has to say. So while the one sister gave into that temptation to worry and, and fuss, and we can understand that, and we could even see ourselves doing that too, the other sister knew what a treasure it was to have Jesus come close. And I just ask us, in our busy world, in our world with all the competing voices and all the other things that tell us, worry about this, be nervous about that, be, you know, try to do this and that, you know, all these things, try to control as much as you can control. I wonder if we realize what a privilege it is just to come here into his house, to sit with Jesus, sit in the Lord's presence, to have him come close to us in communion. I wonder if we realize what a privilege it is we have that every day can start with us sitting with Jesus. That every decision we have to make before we have to say maybe some hard words or some a conversation with someone we're nervous about. Every one of those moments could be a chance to sit. Jesus said we'll be able to do this. He said, if you trust in the Father, if you come close to me, you'll be able to do the things I do, that I did. You and I will be able to wash the feet and forgive the sinner and have faith and hope and intercede for the one who seems confused or lost or even doing damage to ourselves or others around us. We can worry can try to take it into our own hand. I, I, I suppose you could even go the other way that Martha went, which was to try to tell Jesus what to do. We could try to control God if you want to go that way. Or we can do the Jesus thing, abiding in the Father, wanting to share him with others as we serve others. That's what Jesus did. That's what I hope we will do. Whoever do, believes in me will, will do these works I have been doing. One more way I think of looking at what is it we know we can do, and that is we can press on towards the goal. I think it's easy sometimes for us to rest in our laurels, and I never see Gethsemane doing that. I love that about you all. There's such a servant heart. Maybe we could help this family. Maybe we could bring baskets there. Maybe we could open our doors to this. Maybe we can keep this preschool going in this community as it seems to be turning around and it needs young, you know, young families need that kind of child care and education and support. So much we can do. The Apostle Paul of all people could have rested on his laurels. I got to be with Jesus for three years. I got to have him teach me. I've got his righteousness, and I'm already educated as a Pharisee, so I, I know everything I need to know. But the Apostle Paul was so eager to not just know it, but to do everything God gave him to do. He wanted to do those works of Jesus, so he knew. He needed to let the past be in the past, and any success that he had back then sit there and enter each day fresh-eyed, open-hearted, focused on God. What do you have in mind for me to do today? Lord, what is your will? Where shall I go? To whom shall I share? Who do you want me to build up and teach? He said it, I forget what is behind and I strain toward what is ahead. I press on to the goal. You know, I talked about lists at the beginning. Do you realize that the Heavenly Father and Jesus had us at the top of their list? This world's a mess, they said to each other. Hating, fighting, killing, dividing, fearful, taking advantage of, enslaving, all of it happening, sin everywhere. God was grieved in his heart. What do I do? And they wrote a list. Try an ark. Try getting Moses and the uh, Israelites out of slavery. Send my son. All of it was with you and I at the top of his list. Wanting us free. Wanting us back as his loved children. Wanting us with our eyes fixed on Jesus. 
forgetting the past and the hurts and pressing on in the way Jesus is and the way Jesus showed us. You and I may not know the day that life here on earth will end for us, but we know we have this day. We may not know everything about theology and everything that, that God wants us to, you know, that's contained in his word. But as that scripture says, live up to what you do know, what you've already obtained. Do the good Jesus shows. Be the good that Jesus was and is and always will be. I may not know what day will be my last, but I know I have this day and you do too to love and serve him, to honor and praise him, to share him with others. May we start each day with that remembrance. May we forget what's behind and press on and try again if we failed before. May we always seek his strength and seek to know him more and more and more. All to his glory. Amen.